Welcome to the Neoliberal Round Podcast, Season 2, Episode 2, entitled, Who Rules America? Who Rules America? Corporations or China? Uh, In my latest study, which I have abbreviated and submitted as a newsletter, I write that William Dumhorf in 2010 suggested in this book, Who Rules America? Challenges to Corporate and Class Dominance, that it was corporations. And Charles Perrault, in his book, Organizing America, Wealth, Power and the Origins of Corporate Capitalism in 2002, shows how American corporations are and became the dominant and overarching force and feature in American life. Today my project is going further, asking the question, who rules corporations if they ruled America? China, which will be which will be the focus of my one of my research papers and project as I study neoliberalism, globalization, income inequality, poverty, and resistance. The study will suggest China for reasons we must discuss and present in further detail why we have made or come to such an assertion. Firstly, America's political and economic system provides a salacious opportunity for China, who is a totalitarian, so-called communist country with a state-controlled economy and press. So, the ability to quickly and easily make decisions without dissension and to achieve goals are less complicated and cumbersome. It is therefore easy to will the country towards achieving a a particular goal of, let's say, world domination or leadership. I just want to pause here and and, and welcome somebody who is in studio with me today. Welcome. And um, as I continue to share in this episode, uh, you may have some questions that you may want to ask. But let us continue. Um, Firstly, America's political and economic system provides a salacious opportunity for China, who is a totalitarian, so-called communist country with a state-controlled economy and press. So the ability to quickly and easily make decisions without dissension and to achieve goals are less complicated and cumbersome. It is therefore easy to will the country towards achieving achieving a particular goal of, let's say, world domination or leadership. Secondly, China understands America from careful study and is able to develop and abide by a strategy that takes advantage of that knowledge. Thirdly, Max Weber, who is one of the most influential figures in the development of Western modern society and provided the theoretical understanding behind said society, defined capitalism as being driven by the protestant ethic, hard work and saving. Today, America has moved on from that ethic so that its capitalism is about nepotism and greed. This is what Robert Jackal in his book Moral Mazes is conducting um, is, uh, is concluding after conducting a research study using interviews among 100 managers in various companies. Indeed, China is aware of this evolution or change. They understand that America is about individualism mixed in with selfishness, greed and nepotism and connectionism. And you can... Uh, and by the when I say connectionism, I say that in quotes because I'm lifting up, uh, I'm lifting up ideas and conclusions from study done by Walter Litt, who is an economic historian at the University of Penn, who had actually published a book 
which studies e- America's economic labor uh, and e- economy within America within the 1900s. And you can check, uh, check out uh, Walter Litz's books and his ideas. But uh, China is aware of this evolutionary change. They understand that America is about individualism mixed in with selfishness, greed and nepotism and connectionism. And the ability to satisfy that corporate and individual greed is what will take China to reposition itself as the new superpower. Moreover, recently, the NBA acquiesced to China's demands so as to recover the billions it had lost when China had pulled the NBA's business out of China. Suddenly, the NBA fight the NBA's fight against justice gave way to greed and their ability to make more money. China is aware of this and its structure and unilateral power to make decisions in China is a powerful partner for any client to want to have. China can easily create a market for any product given its economic and political system of governance. Recently, my twin brother Ricardo McKenzie sent me a Twitter video post, a Twitter post of, a, of an excerpt of Bill Mayer HBO show where he also asserts using comedy, using comedy, that China rules America. According to the tweet, in quote, when a country can make your big muscled macho man action stars grovel in their language, you know you're somebody's bitch. End quote, Bill Mayer. And I apologize for the use of the word, of the B word. But uh, in fact, he posted the excerpt of the show regarding this issue on Twitter. And I'm going to uh, actually share that, that particular uh, story with you, if you allow me a second to bring it up for you. And finally, new rule, someone has to tell China, you can steal our trade secrets, our software and our intellectual property. But we draw the line at our hot freestyle skiers. Now, if you've been like me over the past few weeks, glued to your TV watching the Olympics, that makes exactly two of us. We knew there were shithole countries, but who knew there was a shithole superpower? I'm sure you've heard about American citizen Eileen Gu, the beautiful model, influencer, and now gold medal winning skier who was born and raised here in America, but who chose to ski in the Olympics for China. Cool, huh? Is it? Is, is that cool now? To choose to represent a totalitarian police state over America? The Olympics pretends to only be about sports, but of course, the games have always been a bit of a proxy war for which country has the best system. And by choosing Team China, Eileen Gu became a living symbol of China's triumph over the West, which wouldn't bother me so much if I thought China had triumphed over us in the ways that really matter, but they haven't. Now, we do have human rights issues right here at home, we do, but we're still at least for another three years... A a democracy based on freedom. And they are an authoritarian surveillance state based on how'd you like to disappear for a few months? Like that uh, tennis player who recently vanished for a while when she said she'd been raped by a government official. We do still throw too many black people in jail. But perspective matters. China has basically jailed an entire ethnic minority, the Uyghurs, a situation that both the Trump and Biden administrations has called a genocide. America is not close to that. And it's a cynical dodge to pretend that China's sins should be overlooked because we all do it. No. In 1997, Britain returned Hong Kong to China with an agreement that Beijing that from Beijing that Hong Kong could retain its free press, honest courts, and democratic government? Well, they lied. Democracy and freedom are being crushed there, and China doesn't want anyone to talk about it. And because so much money is involved, no one does. Two years ago, when the general manager of the Houston Rockets, Daryl Morey, 
tweeted, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong, he was forced to apologize. <laughs> In America, we're supposed to root for democratic government, not apologize for it. But the NBA has a television deal with China worth a billion and a half dollars. So LeBron James said Maury needed to be educated on the situation. The situation being, I got some shoes to sell. <laughs> Kowtow is a Chinese word, but boy, Americans have gotten good at it. <laughs> For years, Google proudly refused to kowtow to Chinese censors, adopting the slogan, don't be evil. But the Chinese market proves so lucrative that, well, okay, a little evil. <laughs> That's the deal China offers American companies and celebrities. We'll give you access to our billion-plus consumers as long as you shut up about the whole police state genocide thing. John Cena took that deal. Well, come on, China accounts for 34% of global box office, and he's a movie star now. So, like the Uyghurs, last year he learned he needed to get some re-education. <laughs> He, John, referred to Taiwan as a country as if it was a separate country from China, which it is. But China would like to do to Taiwan what it did to Tibet and what it's now doing to Hong Kong. So we were treated to this video. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought steroids shrunk your. I want to. I want to. I'm going to go back. So we were treated to this video. I have to show you this. Very, 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 very important. I love and respect China and the Chinese people. And I thought steroids shrunk your balls. <laughs> wow, wait, when a country can make your big, muscly, macho man action stars grovel in their language, you know you're somebody's. That's an excerpt, a five minutes excerpt from uh, from uh, Bill Mayer's from Bill Mayer's show, which uh, HBO on HBO, which was uh, is also available on YouTube. But uh, having said all of this, what what's the solution to all of this? Maybe it's to allow China to remain China, and the U.S. as the U.S. But it cannot be that we should protect our leadership and dominance. Because America does not want to lead anymore. In fact, the leadership at the center is softening, according to Hillary Clinton in 2012, so that there is no one dominant country. All the presidents from Obama to Biden seem to be teetering towards more of a partnership than any one dominant or leading power, which is an old and hegemonic way of constructing a world since our values have changed, or have they? If truth be told, while we seek for partnerships instead of leadership, what we may have today or, or is occurring and developing is a global elitism where a group of people across countries are the dominant figures. These arguments would then lead to the questions as to whether we are too myopic and naive, thinking that our political and economic system provides safety, as is and is exceptional when we have made changes to our capitalism that has facilitated an opening, and whether this is of necessity and or strategy, given the move towards American greed and, retre and, and retreat. 
Chinese dominance, partnerships instead of leadership and or global elitism. But who is righteous here? Is it those who are less evil? And who determines what's less, the subjects or the objects? We will continue to develop and work on this paper and article and you can read further and connect with me on rmckenzie.academia.edu for research and other papers and drafts that I'm working on. You can also tune in to the Neoliberal Round podcast uh, to for recordings of the podcast, other podcasts that you have missed. And uh, you can access my book by uh, accessing my... Uh, going on Ing- Ingram Spark, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo. Uh, it's available in all platforms and um, it provides uh, and uh, sometimes a theoretical basis as well and some study as to where I'm going with all of this. Thank you so much for your support and follow me on Twitter, Ronaldo McKenzie, or you can also check me out on Facebook and uh, add me on your LinkedIn and continue to provide your support. Thank you so much and have a great day.